The Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit is an introductory package intended to function as a playable preview of the next chapter in the Cyberpunk RPG. This Jumpstart Kit is by R. Talsorian Games, the original creators of the Cyberpunk RPG. They published the original game in 1988, and a seminal second edition in 1990 called Cyberpunk 2020. Other editions and countless supplements have come out over the years, but Cyberpunk Red enjoys a higher profile due to being associated with a video game developed in parallel to Red, to be released in 2020 called Cyberpunk 2077. The Jumpstart Kit itself comes as a few separate products, a 45-page rulebook that offers an overview of the refreshed rules for the RPG, a 53-page setting book that includes a primer on the history in the Cyberpunk setting, as well as a fleshed-out one-shot adventure and some adventure seeds, a four-page rules reference cheat sheet, printouts for standees, pre-gen character sheets, and some map elements. The Cyberpunk RPG is certainly known for its aesthetic and setting more than its game mechanics, which haven't changed dramatically in red. The setting book, or world book, goes into moderate detail on how the dystopian world has progressed from about 1990 to the current year of 2045. The timeline here reiterates some of the history as told in the old 1990s Cyberpunk supplements, along with some new divergent events and a sort of soft, partial reboot of the official timeline. Here are the highlights. Note the twin themes of global turmoil and technological advancements, two core pillars in the cyberpunk RPG setting. In the early 1990s, democracy ends in the United States. At the same time, global turmoil begins to churn as incredible fictional technologies begin to develop. In the late 1990s, the United States officially collapses, with almost 100 million homeless and a nuclear war happening in the Middle East. By 2007, megacorporations have entered their second global war, even as clone technology and bionic networking technology has emerged. By 2022, the so-called net, or what we might call the internet, is rendered all but dysfunctional due to a single virus called data crash. In 2025, a fourth major corporate war concludes, solidifying a new, smaller United States that essentially occupies only the eastern seaboard and is ruled by dictatorship. By 2045, local, citywide internets emerge, factories are pumping out fresh technology, and mega buildings are being built to house the homeless. Night City has always been an important part of the cyberpunk RPG setting, and the creators of Red here have retained it as a sort of model cyberpunk city and go-to place for the prototypical cyberpunk experience. As the timeline goes, it starts as a corporate community project by a fictional land developer named Richard Knight. The corporations move in, but it becomes corrupted by mafia and their rough trade. In 2009, the corporations use private security forces to clear out the criminals and re-establish cleanliness and order. Then in 2022, with a fourth corporate war raging between two shipping companies using private armies, a small nuclear bomb goes off in the middle of Night City and causes the center of the city to be uninhabitable for years. This bomb causes the sky to go completely red for two years, then red during sunrise and sunset for the next 10 years. This was called the Time of the Red, but the name stuck even to the year 2045, which is the year in which Cyberpunk Red, this RPG, is set. The political landscape in Night City in the Time of the Red is characterized by the following. The old city government, outgunned and outfinanced by megacorps. The megacorps, specifically four of them, who literally run city functions such as taxation, zoning, policing, and construction. Roving bands of nomads in armored caravans of cars and motorcycles. And your character, who is one of several archetypes I'll discuss later on. The city is full of hover cars, motorcycles, and ground cars run by methane or hydrogen fuel, and data terminals as well as vending machines that will dispense anything from food to clothes to guns. The city enjoys a local area network called the Data Pool, where entertainment and news are exchanged amongst the population. Also notable for gameplay and plot hook purposes is a brain dance, a technological concept wherein one can play back and experience other human memories as their own. A D100 encounter table in the rules book illustrates perfectly what kind of city Night City is. The Jumpstart Kit does not provide the method for building a character. Rather, it gives a couple of rollable tables to generate slight variations on six well-illustrated pre-generated characters. 
a full character creation process, is on offer in the core rulebook. There are nine classes, or roles, not much different from the 1990 game. Three of these roles are not detailed in the Jump Starter Kit and will only be released with the core rulebook. The other six are exemplified by the six pregens. There are 10 stats in the game, and they all range from 1 to 10. Then there are skills. Within the nine basic categories of skills in this RPG, 21 are listed in the Jumpstart Kit. It is assumed that dozens more will be made available in the core rulebook. The life path creation process is actually fully fleshed out in this kit. Walking down a series of rollable tables, you roll or choose your character's background, motivation, goals, friends, enemies, romantic history, and personality type. Cybernetic technology, or tech that is integrated with the body or the brain, is naturally common in this setting. As the book puts it, these installations are much like getting your ears pierced. Basic cyberware includes enhanced hearing, low light vision, targeting vision, reflex boosts, internal radio receivers, and enhanced interface plugs. There are also entire arms or legs that can be replaced in order to hide weapons or increase running or jumping. Cyber weapons, such as rippers, replace parts of your character's fingers or hands with blades. The kit only offers a sampling of each of these types of cybertech. In fact, you will only find 12 different named pieces of cyberware in this rulebook. But it's at this point that it's worth mentioning. If you have any of the old cyberpunk books, or if you have any DIY spirit as a game master, finding and creating new cybertech for your table is not especially challenging. Cyberpunk Red uses a rollover D10 system. The game's mechanics can be summed up as stat plus skill plus 1d10. If there is no skill to apply, then it's stat plus 1d10. For example, at the start of combat, everybody rolls initiative. That would be your reflex stat plus 1d10 from each person. When facing off against another character, it's your stat plus skill plus 1d10 versus their stat skill 1d10. When resolving a task in non-combat, the general difficulty value, or DV, ranges from 10 to 30, 10 being super simple and 30 being something that happens once every few decades. Obviously, the GM can modify any skill check by adding or subtracting points from a DV depending on the situation. Combat has been simplified from the previous version of Cyberpunk. Each character gets one move action and one basic action. A basic action could be any of the following things. You are asked to resolve ranged combat by having a player add their reflex plus marksmanship plus a d10 roll versus a defender's dex plus evasion plus d10. All weapon types in the game have a difficulty value established by range, and of course the GM can throw in any modifier to that DV based on the environment or special circumstances. You can announce that you're aiming for the head of a target, taking a negative 6 penalty to your check for a chance to do double damage. Weapon types each have a damage rating that ranges from 2d6 to 8d10. For melee attacks, players add their dex to their melee weapon skill and a d10. For fisticuffs, they add their dex to their brawling skill and a d10. Armor in Cyberpunk Red is ablative, which means that it degrades every time it is used to absorb damage. There are essentially two shades of injury to worry about. Seriously wounded is when a character has less than 50% of their HP left, in which they take a negative 3 to all checks, then mortally wounded, in which they are at 0 HP and they take negative 5 to all checks, and also have to make a non-modified death save check each round until first aid is rendered. The moment that a death save roll is failed, the character is dead. Healing and recovery is simple, usually just requiring a tech plus first aid skill plus a 1d10. Part of the game that was controversial in the 1990 edition was net running, where a character enters a virtual world, usually to hack, steal, or degrade digital systems or assets. Net running is back in Cyberpunk Red, albeit more simplified. Here's how it works. A net runner class character has special actions called net actions. These are done in or with the net, and are different from real life actions known as meat actions. First, a net runner uses a net action to jack into the system. In the world of Cyberpunk Red, all networks are air-gapped and localized, so a netrunner needs to be physically close to a system in order to access it. All systems are organized like floors of a building, in which the netrunner must travel to in order. 
They have special abilities as a netrunner that will allow them to break through passwords, see the contents of other floors, as well as to attack and to evade so-called black ice or system defense programs. When using one of these abilities, they simply roll their interface level plus 1d10 versus whatever the difficulty value is set by the GM for that given floor or task. They also have programs, which act as weapons and gear in the virtual world. Programs can either boost abilities, attack, or help to defend a netrunner, but the Jumpstart Kit only offers one example of each. There are three elements which a netrunner has to deal with. 1. Passwords and barriers. They cannot get to the next level in a system without breaking through passwords. 2. Black Ice. These are programs that protect systems. The sole example given in the Jumpstart Kit is the Hellhound, an anti-personnel program that appears to the netrunner like a flaming black metal wolf and does 3d6 damage to a netrunner's brain if they land a hit. And the third element a netrunner has to deal with is time. If the GM is running a proper game of cyberpunk, a netrunner is part of a team, and they are pressed for time when she is jacked in. In other words, security and defense systems in real life should be closing in as a netrunner struggles towards an objective in the virtual world. I received the digital version of the Jumpstart Kit and was able to quickly grab the print and play assets and assemble them into a functioning encounter map in a virtual tabletop. It's extremely nice for any RPG product to come with assets like this, but you don't see it very often. In my limited experience, only Hank at Runehammer Games includes game assets with his publications. It's sort of like including batteries with a toy. The one shot included in the kit, called The Apartment, presents a story in three parts. It's organized into a framework that serves as a template for any GM wanting to craft a fight the megacorp scenario. Our Talsorian Games did a decent job of bringing cyberpunk back, but it can be disjunctive to imagine what is essentially a 2010s continuation of a 1990s imagining of 2045 tech. Technology in Cyberpunk Red stays true to the old pillars of mostly conventional weaponry and non-transhuman cybernetics. It doesn't try to backdoor the many obvious insights into networking and computing we take for granted in our real lives today. In that sense, it's less a glimpse into a possible gonzo future like it was in 1990, and more of another chapter to an old classic fully departed from the land of even remote possibility. Rather than be any sort of reinvention or reboot, the creators have dug down their heels and reinforced the notion of cyberpunk trademark, as timeless technopulp, but tweaked the game mechanics for faster and easier play. Links for everything are below. Thanks for watching. This is Dave signing off. See ya.